Howdy, guys. IR Scoop here again. Um, it was brought to my attention that some people are actually interested in learning to play Commander or trying to convert into playing Commander. So I figured I'd make a quick little uh, video on how to actually play Commander, or at least the basics of Commander to get people into the format and understanding so they can, you know, join the best format ever. Uh, but first, before I get into this, I'm going to have to actually cover the um, basics of magic in general, like how magic is played. I don't fret because if you have any friends that don't know how to play and they're always like, oh, well, it's too much to understand. You can send them to this video because, like I said, it's going to literally be a crash course. I'm going to cover how to play magic. Extremely simple, extremely fast. And um, then I will cover the uh, commander aspect of magic. Um, you can check the description. I will put a uh, timestamp in it so you can skip ahead to the commander portion if you already know how to play magic. All right, so if I show you these cards and you're new to Magic, and I told you every one of these cards is something different, it would blow your mind. But let me simplify things for you here. What if I went and did this and said there's only two different types of cards in Magic? Seems a little bit more manageable. Okay, so here it is. You have your lands, which could be five colors, actually six. Uh, but all colors are the rainbow. If you ever forget the colors, if you look on the back of a magic card, it has all the colors. White, blue, black, red, and green. Okay, each of those have different play styles. But I could separate all the different types of cards in magic with just these two right here. You have lands and then your spells. Okay, this is all in a nutshell. So some of this will technically be wrong, but at the same time, technically, no. Um, so you look at them. You have your land and non-lands, and then to break it up even more in depth, in depth, oh my words, um, then you have your creatures, breaking it down to three sections now. You have your lands, your creatures, and then your non-creature spells, okay? So that that's making that big old pile look a little bit more manageable, because you have your creatures, which is how you kill people, and then you have your non-creature spells. Okay, now, the basics of magic. Everybody starts off in a standard format. Everybody starts off with 20 life. You have one of these crazy little 20-sided dice here, and the symbol on them, is just, if it's a magic dice, um, is 20. And so you can see that it goes all the way around 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and keeps on going. So you start off at 20, and the objective to win is to reduce your opponent's life total to zero, and you generally do that by casting a couple spells that will do damage to them, but mainly you do it by hitting them with creatures. Or have your opponent run out of cards. If they try to draw a card and they don't have any cards in their deck or their library, then they lose the game. Um, you can also win with Infect as well, but um, yeah, we're not going to cover that in this. So going back to the types of spells that there are, the creatures and the non-creature spells, I'm going to break these spells up now. There are um, Sorceries instance planeswalkers enchantments and then artifacts now i could go more in depth in this because there's regular artifacts and artifact equipments there's regular enchantments and then enchantment auras there's planeswalkers and then instance and sorceries happen at different speeds but keeping this in a nutshell these are your non-creature spells so in general most times when you cast these spells they just, that's it. You cast them, they go to your graveyard, you're done with them in general. And But when you cast creatures, they come out onto your battlefield or your playing board and they stay out there until removed or killed in combat. But how do you get them out there? If you look at the top right corner, you will see what's called a CMC, which is converted mana cost or the casting cost of the creature. You see here, this one has a little blue symbol and one gray symbol. The gray symbol is called is referred to as generic. So it could be any color. It could be any color for it. But the blue is blue, so you have to use blue for it. That's what you have your lands for. Every turn, you get to play only one land. You only get to play one land unless a card says otherwise. So this would be your basic land. Now, how do you use this to create this? You have to tap it. What, what we, um, in Magic, we call it tapping. And what it is, is basically turning it sideways. So that way you know it's spent and everybody else on the board knows it's spent. So most people are like, yeah, tap my mana. One blue. Okay, now, now sideways it has been spent. You have one blue mana. 
but you need one more additional color of any color to produce um, this little generic mana here, then you have enough mana, and then you could be like, okay, cool, I'm casting this guy. So that this would technically be like a turn two creature because you would need you can only place one land per turn. Now, if you look at all cards, you'll notice in the top right you can see their CMCs or casting costs. This costs two of any color. This costs one red and then one of any color, one white, four of any color double swamps and then three of any color this one costs one green one blue and then one of any color etc etc um so that basically sums it up and you generally use your creatures to kill them now like i said i was going to cover it all in a nutshell for everybody um just to get them on the basic understanding of magic now um it's up to you guys to finish teaching them all the fine details okay as far as power, toughness, and how all that works. Okay. And then, now, let's cover the way the um, the steps in Magic are actually held. Okay, so there's... Generally, there's only five phases in Magic per turn. So, like, a turn is obviously... I play whatever I can, then my opponent... Then I pass the turn to my opponent, and he plays whatever he can. How do the phases work? Okay, well, simple. We'll start off with our begin phase. So in the begin phase is where you will untap all mana that you have used, etc., etc. So let's go ahead and place down some lands that we have. We'll have lands right here. Let's say we used all these last turn, so they're tapped. And let's just go ahead and throw out a couple creatures. Okay, we have a couple creatures out there. Okay, so at the beginning of our turn, we will, uh, during our untap step, we will untap everything. Anything on our side of the field, unless it says otherwise on the card, it will untap. So these are tapped right now because I used them last turn. At the beginning of my turn, they will untap, meaning I can use them again now. And then I will enter my draw step where I would draw a card from my library. And then I keep it in my hand. You can only have seven cards in your hand. At the end of your turn, you can only have seven cards. You can have more than seven cards in your hand during your turn, but at the end of your turn, you can only have seven cards unless you have a card that states otherwise. cool thing about Magic is there's basics to it, and then other than that, the cards make the rules themselves. Okay, so now that we went through that, the next step is after you untap everything and draw your card is your first main phase. What happens in your first main phase? Your first main phase is where you can cast spells. You cast spells during your first main phase. That's where I'm going to be like, okay, cool. I'm going to tap uh, one red and then one of any color. And then I'm going to cast that one spell I had that costs one red and one of any color. And then I, you read the card and it tells you what it does. You have to tap that mana in the top right to be able to cast it. And then the card tells you what it does. Put a 1-1 counter on a target creature, it deals 2 damage to that creature's controller. Boom. Okay, and then I'm done with that. Let's say that that actually costed 4, or let's just say I'm done casting at that. And then now what do I do? Okay, the next phase is your combat phase. So during combat is where we use our creatures to attack our opponents and bring their life totals down to 0 and win the game. Yippee. Okay, so how does that work? Okay, so combat is actually divided up into 3 subcategories. Um, there's your declare attackers, declare blockers, and then the damage step. Now, there's actually a begin combat, but that's the more intricate stuff. We're not covering that right now. All right, so now if you want to declare a creature and an attacker, you just turn it sideways. There are things like summoning sickness, again, not cover covering that. You just turn your creature sideways. You tap your creature. So when you tap your creature, that's you declaring it as an attacker. I'm going to attack with this creature. So I'm going to tap him. I'm declaring him an attacker. Okay, and now, once you're done declaring all your attackers, whether you, you don't have to attack with everything, but know that if something is turned sideways, it cannot block. So sometimes you might want to leave something open to be able to block so someone doesn't hit you. Because if you don't have any blockers and someone attacks you, you're going to take all that damage. Um, the damage of the cards are in the bottom right of the cards. It goes power toughness so the left numbers their power that's how strong your creature is how much damage they can do and then the right numbers their toughness how much damage they can take okay not covering abilities in this in this uh tutorial here but i can in a later tutorial if requested 
Okay, so let's say that we're going to attack with one of our uh, both of our creatures. Okay, let's say our opponent has blockers or doesn't have blockers or they choose not to block. Or even if they did choose to block, if their creature is strong enough, it will kill ours. If ours are strong enough, it will kill theirs. Okay, but <clears throat> we have to declare attackers first, then they declare who is blocking. And before anything kills anything, you enter the third step of combat, which is called the damage step which is where all the damage is done. So it all happens at, at the same time. Because in Magic, there's a thing called priority, and it goes back and forth between, do you choose to do anything during this? Okay, no. Do I choose to do anything to this? No. Okay, so now we go on to the next thing. Okay, and then after combat, there is another main phase. This is your second main phase. Okay, second main phase, exact same thing as your first main phase, also commonly referred to as your post-combat main phase. Um, you can cast more spells if you want. You can cast your spells if you want, if you haven't casted any yet, etc., etc. Then after your main phase is the, where you pass your turn, and that is called the end phase. Um, two things happen at the end phase. is the beginning of the end of your turn and then the cleanup step. So end phase, if you're done with everything, yes, I passed my turn. Okay, end phase happens. So if you have more than seven cards in your hand during the cleanup step, you will discard cards, put them into your graveyard from your hand, until you have seven or less cards and or seven cards in your hand. Um, so that covers how to play magic. Congratulations, you know how to play magic in what was that like less than ten minutes because I ran my mouth or like five. <laughs> okay, so now how to play commander. Now this commander is gonna be a little bit more in depth than that, or maybe honestly just bracing it uh, just as much as that. But it will get you into the format and understanding of the format. And that's what's important because we want to get as many people into our cult as we can. I mean, <clears throat> our format. <laughs> okay, so what is a what is a commander, and how do I know what a commander is? Okay, um, you choose your commander. That's the best part about commander. You get to choose your commander. Any legendary creature can be your commander. That's the only requirement. It has to be a legendary creature. Okay, see so here, legendary creature. If you don't know what type of uh, creature you have, it just say right there next to the creature. If it says legendary, then it's legendary. It is eligible to be your commander. Legendary, 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 crazy. So like you'll have uh, generally legendary creatures. Uh, creatures are legendary because they're good. They have some type of effect that makes them good enough to be worthy of being legendary. Um, creatures like this. Are not legendary, obviously, so they cannot be your commander. Um, how do you um, know as far as uh, what your deck can consist of? Uh, simple, it's the colors of your commander. Whatever color your commander is, is all the colors are of spells you're allowed to have in your 100-card deck. Now, the thing about commander, you're, it's basically the same thing as normal magic except for you can die by commander damage, and you have this crazy thing called a commander. Okay, it's, it's really simple. You have 100 cards. Um, you actually have a 99-card deck, but your 100th card is your commander. Your commander does not go inside your deck. Okay, you keep your commander off in the command zone, which is generally in the top left for most people. In the top corner of their board somewhere is where they keep their commander. Um, but that, as far as color identity of your deck... 99 card deck is going to be whatever your commander's color identity is. Now, what is a color identity? That's in the top right, the casting cost. You'll see it. You'll see here that this Krenko has double red, and that's it. He has no other colors anywhere else on his card. So it, this is a mono red commander. You see, Kalia, it has Mardu, white, black, red. Okay, so you can run all decks, or I should say this now, all decks can run colorless spells. Any deck can run a colorless spell. Colorless spells fit into any deck. Okay, so this could be mono red and artifacts or whatnot. So Kalia, you can only run red, black, and white spells. You can't, you can't run anything else other than that because it would be illegal to be into your deck. Um, this is the trick here. These are where some commanders are better than others. Um, you can see Joda. Generally, you would only have white, red, and blue cards within your deck <clears throat> if he is your commander. 
But if you look down in his um, rules, uh, rules texting or uh, what whatnot, you'll see that he actually has all five colors. He has white, blue, black, red, green. That counts for commander identity. So you can have all five colors in your deck. This is a five color good stuff deck. You can have all five colors because he has all the symbols for those manas down here in his rule uh, rules text. And then up here, he's only America, so that's fine. Um, Janara is obviously green, white, blue. Derevi, same thing. Derevi, however you say it. And Nala is Grixis, which is blue, red, black. Okay, now... The the only real difference to how do you win in Commander is it's the same thing as normal. You try to deck your opponents out or you bring them down to zero life, but you start off with 40 life. Um, and there's one additional way to lose in Commander, and that's if anybody's Commander does a total of 21 damage to you. It has to all be from the same Commander. So, like, if their commander has hit you multiple times throughout the game, let's say Anala has attacked you five times, so you're at 20 commander damage from Anala. You keep track of this on the side. But let's say, like, you're playing some crazy life gain deck and you're actually sitting at, like, 200 or maybe even, like, infinite life right now. Um, it will not matter if Anala hits you again and gets to a total of 21 commander damage, you instantly lose because she hit you for 21 total commander damage. Doesn't matter how much life you have, she hit you for 21. That's the addition to it. Um, another catch to it as well is that um, uh, out of those 99 cards, generally you're going to be running about 39 um, or 37 to 40 lands. But of those land or of those 99 cards, aside from basic lands, no two cards are allowed to repeat themselves. Like you can't have two of the same card um, unless it's a basic land. You can have multiple islands, multiple swamps, etc. But you can't have two of the same spell in your deck unless it's uh, a land's not a spell. So yeah. Um, but like your non basic lands, you can only have one of them. So let's look at these non-basic lands. You, you wouldn't be able to run four of these like you would normally be able to do in a regular commander um, or a regular deck. Since these are not basic lands, you would only be able to run one of each of these. Okay. And then <clears throat> whenever you can cast your commander at any time you could cast a creature. Okay. Um, unless he has flash. Uh, so let's just put our, uh, Kalia up there in the corner. Okay, uh, actually, no, let's do Janara. Okay, so let's, let's explain commander tax and how this works in casting your commander now. So you could cast your commander anytime you could cast a regular creature, as long as you have the mana to cast them. Okay, so let's say we cast, uh, we cast our Janara. Now it's good to keep like a counter like up in the corner where she came from so you can keep track of how many times you casted your commander. Because every time you cast your commander, there's a thing called commander tax. And what that is, it tax on two colorless extra mana. So let's say we cast Janara, Asura of War, Asura of War, however you say her. And then let's say she dies. So we're going to choose to return her. Anytime your commander leaves the battlefield, you get to choose whether they go to wherever they're supposed to go or they go return to the command zone. So generally you want to put them in the command zone unless somebody's returning them to your hand, or they're putting it in the graveyard and you have graveyard play. Let's say you let it return to the graveyard, and somebody exiles it from the graveyard, you can choose then to put it back into your command zone. Um, so like you basically, you can never really get rid of someone's commander unless you like enchant it and then turn it into like a tree <laughs> or a moon. Um, so let's say we cast Janora. Osura War, however you say her. And let's just say that uh, she's died, and this was our first time casting her, and she went up into the corner. Okay, so now what Janara is going to look like is right here, except for, to help you visualize this more, she's going to have two, two generic mana sitting right next to her casting cost. Every time you cast her, that commander tax goes up by two. So let's say we cast her again. Instead of costing three, like she normally would, she is now going to cost that same three plus two, so a total of five. Okay, she comes out, 
Let's change our dice so we're keeping track of how many times we've casted her twice. So she dies again, we choose to return her to the command zone. Okay, now Janara is going to ca uh, cast uh, for seven. So you change that two to a four now. Okay, does, uh, that should make enough sense to you guys for you to understand how commander tax works. And it keeps going up. So that's why sometimes it's better if somebody returns it to your hand for it to stay in your hand because you don't have to pay commander tax if you're casting it from your hand. Okay, so that generic mana will disappear if you're casting it from your hand. Um, I believe that should actually cover everything as far as how to get into commander and then um, uh, start building decks and having fun. Just remember the key is it's a 100-card deck your commander counts as one of those cards. So it's really a 99-card deck. Um, I always recommend to sleeve your commander in a different color sleeve than the rest of your deck if you don't throw it in a top loader like this um, to help prevent from you mixing your commander into your deck and spending forever trying to find it. But remember, 100-card decks, your commander counts as one. So 99-card decks, other than basic lands, no cards are allowed to repeat. And you are limited to... Limited to whatever color identity that your commander has. Other than that, guys, I really hope this video helps you guys understand commander and magic in general and get you into the um, to the cardboard crack or into the best format. Other than that, guys, IR Scoop, out.